Hi there, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on rotations. Pablo is spinning the prize wheel shown. A spin can be clockwise or counterclockwise. Define these two words in your own words. Well, first for clockwise, clockwise is in this type of direction. So I would say we're rotating to the left as we're going clockwise. Counterclockwise is the opposite of that. It's going this type of direction. So I would say we are rotating to the right. Now, if the section labeled 8 on the left part of the wheel, which is right here, spins 90 degrees clockwise, where will it land? Well, it's going to be going up in this direction. So we could say it's going to land at the top. If one of the sections labeled 4 makes three complete turns counterclockwise, how many degrees will it have traveled? Well, each turn is 360 degrees. And we're making three turns, so we can multiply that by three to get 1,080, so 1,080 degrees. Are there any points in the wheel that stay fixed or do not move when the wheel spins? If so, what are the points? Well, I would say this point right here in the middle doesn't move. So I'm going to say yes at the center. It does not move. It is fixed. Does the center of the wheel change if the wheel is spun counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise? Well, if it's not moving, no. And does the distance from the center to the edge change as it spins? No. This distance is the radius. The size of the circle does not change by rotating. And now let's get on to our lesson. A rotation is a transformation in which a figure is rotated or turned about a fixed point. The center of rotation is the fixed point. Just like the center of our spinner did not move, the center of our rotation doesn't move. A rotation does not change the size or shape of the figure, just like the radius did not change in the spinner. Um, the, the size or shape of the figure does not change as we graph rotations on the coordinate plane. So the pre-image and the image are congruent. Now, as it says over here as well, rotations can be described in degrees and direction, for example, 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise. Triangle LMN with vertices L54, M57, and N87 represents a desk in Jackson's bedroom. He wants to rotate the desk 180 degrees counterclockwise, or counterclockwise 180 degrees, about vertex L. Graph the figure and its image. Then give the coordinates of the vertices for triangle L prime, M prime, N prime. Step one, graph the original image. There it is. Now, one way of doing this is to graph the rotated image by using a protractor to measure an angle of 180 degrees with M as one point on the ray and L as the vertex. Mark off a point the same length as ML. Label this point as shown. Repeat for n. And you can see where that's the same distance away from l. Now l is the same point, so it's not going to be moved. So the coordinates of this new triangle are 5, 4, 5, 1, and 2, 1. And now we're going to try one of these on our own, however, probably without a protractor. Rectangle ABCD with vertices A negative 7, 4, B negative 7, 1, C negative 2, 1, and D negative 2, 4 represents the bed in Jackson's bedroom. 
Graph the figure and its image after a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about verte vertex C. Then give the coordinates of the vertices for triangle, or rectangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Well, first we need to graph the original image. So negative 7, 4, right here, and that's our A. Negative 7, 1 then would be here, and that's our B. Negative 2, 1 is here, and that's our C. And negative 2, 4 is our D. And we can connect these. And the first point of the rotation will be the easiest. We have rotation around C. So C and C prime are going to be the same. And there is a way now to graph these and counting without a protractor. It's a little challenging, but I think we can do it. Let's start with B. The original B, if we count to get to C, is one, two, three, four, five spots right to get to B. And now this rotation, 90 degrees clockwise, is going in that direction. And so instead of 5 right, if we're going 90 degrees, we're going this way. So we're going up for the new B. And so from here, we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up and label that our B prime. What about D? Well, D, to get to the C, you have to count one, two, three down. And since we're rotating it again, 90 degrees this way, about C, we're going this way, we're going to count from C, one, two, three, that way. And so my new D is right here. And now you could almost fill in A just by imagining where it should be. But there is a way to count this as well. If we count from A, one, two, three, we're going three down, and one, two, three, four, five, right. So we're going 90 degrees now up in this direction, up in this direction, and so we're going to be going three to the right and five up from C. So again, one, two, three to the right and one, two, three, four, five, up. And that's the new way. We can connect our dots, and hopefully you can see now where this was a 90 degree rotation around C. We turn his bed 90 degrees. And again, this is a little complicated and it will take practice. Rotating a figure about a point is actually much more difficult than what we're about to do next, rotating about the origin. As we rotate points about the origin, there are rules for these. You can see the 90 degree angles here, the 180 degree or even the 270 degree rotations. But there are things that we can do with our ordered pairs using these rules. With a 90 degree rotation, you can flip your x, y and make your x negative. With the 180 degree rotation, we're keeping our x, y, but making the negatives. And again, with 270, we're flipping the x, y, but the y becomes negative instead of the x. And so let's take a look at what this might look like. 
Triangle DEF has vertices negative 4, 4, E negative 1, 2, and F negative 3, 1. Graph the figure and its image after a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. Then give the coordinates of the vertices for triangle D prime, E prime, F prime. Now, there are steps here on how to do this, but let's take a look at another way of doing this. D is at negative 4, 4. And our rule for a 90 degree clockwise rotation is that I can take my x, y, reverse my ordered pair into a y, x, but the x becomes negative. So in theory, using that logic, if I reverse the x, y with d, that should be 4, negative 4, but it's going to stay 4, 4, as that negative would go away, as it's shown right here. And where does my new d end up being in this graph? Well, 4, 4. Let's try one of these on our own. Quadrilateral M, N, P, Q has vertices M, 2, 5, N, 6, 4, P, 6, 1, and Q, 2, 1. Graph the figure and its image after a counterclockwise rotation of 270 degrees about the origin. Then give the coordinates of the vertices for quadrilateral M prime, N prime, P prime, Q prime. Let's graph the original image first. Let's graph our M at 2, 5, Let's graph our n at 6, 4. Our p is at 6, 1. And our q is at 2, 1. And this is our quadrilateral. Looks a lot like a trapezoid, which it is. Now there's a little neat trick here. A 270 degree counterclockwise rotation is the same as a 90 degree clockwise. And if we look at our rule for 90 degree clockwise rotations again, this down here is a 270 degree clockwise but let's think about the 90 degree clockwise. All of our x, y's, we can say, all right, reverse it into y, x, but that x is going to be the opposite of the x. So as we look at this list for m, 2, 5, n, 6, 4, p, 6, 1, and q, 2, 1, Let's go ahead and reverse all of those ordered pairs into the new M, N, P, and Q. Well, M becomes 5, 2, N is 4, 6, P is 1, 6, and Q becomes 1, 2 as we reverse those X and Ys. But be careful because we're not done yet. These have to be the opposites. And they were positive, so these have to become negative now. And so now I can graph that. M is going to be at 5, negative 2. N is going to be at 4, negative 6. P is at 1, negative 6 and Q is at 1, negative 2. And that is my rotated image. Now something kind of neat happens if you were to look closely at these. And it's kind of a way to check this. If you draw kind of a dotted line here, 
from Q to the origin because that's where we rotate it around. And you return that dotted line back to the new Q. What does it form? Well, either a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation or a 90 degree clockwise rotation. Same thing. And you could do the same for all of the points. The rules are helpful. It takes some patience and some time to work through them. And that is it for this lesson. I wish you the best of luck.